At that time, <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, I came to cast fire on earth and wish that it were already kindled. I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, in one house, there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of our Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in Christ Jesus, as if we don't have enough reasons for division, for problems, for fights, for disagreements within ourselves, Jesus adds an extra point by saying, I have come to cast fire on earth. I have come to bring division. What exactly is this division? What exactly is this fire? Jesus calls us to be disturbed. John the Baptist told his disciples, I baptize you with water, but the one who's after me, he will baptize you with fire. And when Jesus says here, I have come to cast fire on earth, he means it. It is often interpreted as the fire of warmth, as the fire that is needed to kindle ourselves, as the fire that helps or aids in cooking. But I don't think Jesus says that today. He means it when he says, I have come to bring division. But isn't Jesus supposed to be the Prince of Peace? Did not the angels tell at his birth, peace to people of goodwill? What exactly does Jesus mean when he says, I have come to bring fire on earth and I have come to divide a house, divide five, three against two and two against three, father against son and son against father. And the easiest division, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law and mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. It's not the petty fights that we have. It's not the selfishness that we hold on due to which divisions and fights occur. No, not at all. Jesus challenges us that in following him, we choose a radical discipleship. When we choose to follow Jesus, we make a conscious choice. We take a decision in life to be different, to follow the teachings of Jesus and to stand for it no matter what. Following Jesus, dear friends, is certainly a challenge. Being followers of Jesus means that we cannot be happy with lukewarmness. We can't be happy with bland food. We have to make a choice to be passionate in following Jesus. Someone was telling me some time back, Father, I can never agree with my friends. As often as we meet, always the topic comes about someone who's not present, petty gossip. And I say, why at all do we have to speak about people who are absent? And whenever I enter my group, my Christian group, they say, Holy Mary has come. She's come to bring conversion to all of us. And it always causes a kind of disturbance. I believe this is exactly the kind of disturbance that Jesus calls us to bring in our groups. When children make decisions which are not good for the family, it is the duty and right of parents to correct it to remind them that it's not right. You may sound too old-fashioned. 
You may have disagreements. They may not speak with you, but stand to values. And that is what Jesus challenges us through today's gospel. There are three things that we need to keep in mind when we enter into such a dialogue. First, it is all done with love. Love for the other person and love for Jesus and his teachings. When we fail to do it with love, we continue to cause unhealthy disturbance, unhealthy fights, unhealthy silences in our families and friendship groups. The second point is, it is always done without an act of selfishness. It's not done for my gain, not done to make my point proved or to show myself as bigger or better than the other person. It is done because Jesus calls us to do so. Christian living is about casting fire on earth. And the third point is it is done because we are convinced in our conscience. It is a conscientious choice that we make to step in and to cause that renewal in our lives. May we never be happy in what we do. May we allow the Spirit of God to disturb us because in, in the Spirit of God, there is newness of life. I would like to close this day's reflection with this little prayer, which was close to the heart of Cardinal Desmond, Bishop Desmond. Disturb us, Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little, when we arrived safely because we sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the waters of life. Having fallen in love with life, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our effort to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of the new heaven to dim. Disturb us, Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wilder seas, where storms will show your mastery, where losing sight of land, we shall find the stars. We ask you to push back the horizons of our hopes and to push into the future in strength, courage, hope and love. May we be disturbed. Amen.